Welcome to the Age Group Multisport Podcast, the podcast that allows age groupers to share their stories. Hiya, and thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of AMP with me, Richard Conway. Hope you're all well, and if you've been racing, hope it went well. And if you've been training, I hope that's going well and you're uh, well on the way towards getting the level of fitness that you require for your races. Uh, We'll be discussing racing in a bit, as there's been some more European Championship duathlons going on over this weekend. Just gone. Uh, but first, to our guest, we um, will be speaking to Callum Smith. And Callum is the son of last episode's guest, Malcolm Smith. And it was Malcolm suggested that we get Callum on uh, so he could share his story. But yeah, I couldn't swim, but I could run. Um, so I kind of took to that and tried doing it. I did a couple of brick runs and found that it hurt like hell. Um, uh, trying to do a mile off the bike is very, very different to trying to do a 5k just straight out. Isn't yeah. It? And the two stories are pretty intertwined, as you would expect, being father and son. Uh, so it was a nice dynamic to have them uh, next to each other in the series. Callum's probably the youngest age grouper that we've had on the uh, podcast. He's just finishing college um, this year and will be starting university in September. It was really nice to hear Callum's development in the sport um, and what he's tried and um, where he is at the moment So and what he plans to do in the future. So that's all coming up. I'm sure you'll enjoy that one from a, a younger person's perspective. I really enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to following him in the future and see how far he can go. And there was a race taking place um, over in Germany this weekend. It was the European Middle Distance Championships in Alsdorf. I hope that's how you pronounce it. And there was a few of our previous guests racing. And I'm just going to give them all a shout out. Baldock, he finished 11th in his age group. Simon Hall finished 4th in his age group. Yanni Christodoulou finished 11th in his age group. Finally, Andy Newham finished 15th. So well done, guys. Um, I remember on uh, the episode with Andy, he said he was going to go back and... um, Give it another go. So well done, Andy, for going back and trying again. So hope you enjoyed it. Another one of our previous guests from across the pond, um, Jeff Schreiber, was racing at the weekend at the Ironman 70.3 at St. George. And looking on uh, his social media, it was um, a good day out, if not very hot. And if you haven't heard of any of these guys and haven't listened to the podcast, go back and uh, Look out the names and uh, give them a listen. Some great stories there, as as ever. A couple of podcasts to mention. Um, the Simon Ward podcast. I was listening to that last week. And he was talking about how strength training can help you become a faster cyclist. And the guest that he had on was a, a guy called Menashem Brody, who is the uh, national strength and conditioning coach for the Israel National Track Cycling Team. But he's also got his own consultancy business and he's written two books, um, Strength Training for Cycling uh, and Lift Heavy Shit. And I just, it sort of like resonated with me, this guy. Um, it was he was very, very good um, what he was talking about. So that's worth a, a listen. Um, worth Definitely worth 30 minutes of your time. Really entertaining, as ever, Simon uh, Ward's podcasts usually are. And the second podcast I would like to recommend is a podcast called The Knowledge Project with Shane Parrish. Um, It's generally not a sports um, podcast as as such. Uh, He has all sorts of different guests on there. Um, But on this particular episode 193 he had dr jim law on and dr law is a a world-renowned performance psychologist and he's author of about 16 books and he's got 30 years of experience and applied research 
and he believes that success isn't determined by another skill or degree or a course, but something that changes on the inside. Um, and in the episode, he reveals everything he knows about mental toughness and winning the mind game. And it was a really, really good episode. And from that, I went on and looked out Dr. Jim's own podcasts. He's only got two in his series, but uh, I listened to those also and they were really, really good. So that's a couple of podcasts worth digging out and uh, listening to, in my humble opinion. The triathlon season's ramping up nicely. There uh, have been a few things that you can watch highlights of on YouTube. Notice that Max Stapley had won one of the World Cups uh, recently. And Alex Yee had been racing also, and he, he won uh, the race that he was in. I think it was Valencia that he taken part in i haven't managed to catch any highlights of that one yet um so yeah there's things coming up all the time and uh, there's also lots of cycling on and the giro d'italia has just started this weekend so uh, i'm glued to the the television as anybody who's listened to this before knows that uh, big cycling fan here so that's uh, gonna keep me absorbed for the next three weeks on a personal front back training um easing back into it Done a few track sessions now and a few easy runs with Mrs C. We managed to get a track session on Saturday. We went out on our bikes on um, Sunday morning early. Well, early for us, about nine o'clock. Um, I think if anybody in our club realised we were up at nine o'clock, they'll probably thought we shit the bed. <laughs> but um, yeah, we were up and we were out before the bank holiday traffic got going and it was glorious and really nice and sunny. Uh, we're out for about an hour and 15 minutes. And then on the Monday, we did um, a bank holiday brick session. Well, it was more like a mini duathlon where we did a short run, short bike, and then another short run just to finish it off, just getting Mrs. C into the mode of um, running, biking and running, and um, also doing a bit of drafting behind me when she could. So, yeah, it was a... Nice way to finish the bank holiday, and the weather was glorious as well, so that helped. Um, I haven't put in for any races as yet, because I don't feel like I'm fit enough, and I've still got a bit of a niggle in my knee, um, but I'm trying to work around that, so watch this space. Was looking maybe to do Dali more, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'm not, I'm not far enough along, and uh, looking at the names that are already down there, um, it's going to be quite competitive. Um, Anyway, so I think I'll have to wait till the back end of the season and, and see what happens. But uh, yeah, back running, so that's that's great. Really happy about that. And if you want to see what we've been up to, we've put loads of videos on our uh, YouTube channel. It's mainly been uh, me that's been putting them up. I did put a shout out to our uh, previous guests and some of them some of them did send some stuff in. Uh, Christina um who also always listens to this podcast she's been great and she's sent some uh, videos through and we've put up on our youtube channel um which is nice to see what she's been up to she did a first try so you can pop over there and check that one out um but yeah it hasn't really took off unfortunately but i've just kept on putting some uh, videos together and putting them on there so if it just turns out to be me and christina and maybe a couple of others that's fine um, the offer's there for people to send their videos in. I know it's just time consuming and uh, people haven't got the time to do it, so that's fair enough. I just thought it would be a nice thing uh, for people to get involved in and share what they're doing. But uh, there you go, you try these things and if they don't work out, that's the way it is. Um, but we'll continue. Uh, but if you haven't seen any, head over to our YouTube channel, Amp GB, and uh, yeah, please do subscribe and uh any comments, leave them in the comments box. And yeah, hope you enjoy them. So now on to the main event. Um, hope you enjoy Callum's journey so far. A really nice kid. Um, got his head screwed on. And yeah, I think you will enjoy it. So we'll see you on the other side. So thank you once again for um, coming in and agreeing to come on the podcast. I think you are probably the youngest... Um, athlete we've had on uh, other than we've got a young lad at the minute who's on our amp next gen podcast where we yeah. were following three athletes who were trying to qualify this year for oh, age okay. group and uh, he's called harry 
and he's got a qualification race this weekend at um oh where the hell's it at I knew I'd forget it. Is it Mallory? Is it? Mallory Park. Mallory, well done. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> Mallory Park. I was going to say Alton Park, but yeah, Mallory yeah. Park. He's got his race this weekend. So we've been following him for the last 12 or so weeks. Yeah. Uh, 14 weeks, I think it is. And I think he was 16 or 17. So okay. he, he's been the youngest. But yeah, <laughs> you're next. So yeah, if you'd just like to introduce yourself and um, yeah, just tell us a little bit about what you did growing up. Yeah, definitely. So my name's Callum Smith. Um, I'm an 18 year old triathlete. Um, and I've had well, I've done a lot of sport when I was younger. Uh, I started off uh, doing track and uh, field and trying at that, and then doing little bits of cross country. Um, but I was never really any good at it. Um, it wasn't until I kind of grew up, grew up a little bit, and then started getting back into it that I started to find that maybe I could win things and uh, do a bit better. Um, I stopped doing track at about ten or eleven, um, and that's when I moved into table tennis. Um, because. Well, um, well, I'm moving table tennis because my dad did it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing's just following after my dad. Um, but yeah, um, which is great, isn't it? Because like, it's great to have an inspiration. Yeah, and, definitely. You know, to see what is capable. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah great. And, well, it's helped the training as well because he knew half of it, so I got pretty good at it pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, so I grew into table tennis. I think I got ranked something like 110 in the country at wow. one point. Um, so I got decent at it, um, and then. So did you play county and that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I represented the county three or four times. Yeah, and um, then was any? Did you go national? Did you? Uh, I tr- I think I was a couple of places off. Both uh, my brothers went national. Yeah. Um, but I never really got there. Never got there. No, I was always the youngest in my age because of where my birthday sat. Of course, um, and that counts for a lot sometimes, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it because um, the cut off was the first of January to be in age groups and I was I'm the 30th of December so. <laughs> 14th of December oh that's it <laughs> but yeah um, so I was always the youngest and I always moved up age groups a bit sooner than I wanted to yeah. um, so it kind of put a damper on that but then lockdown hit um, uh, and then I got into cycling a bit more um, and table tennis competitions stopped because of that um, mm. but yeah um, cycling more and more and more and then bike crash and broke my wrist and that was the end of table tennis <laughs> was that on the road when you crashed yeah that yeah. on the road yeah. I just touched the wheel and went down mm. um, snapped my wrist because I didn't know how to fall at that point yeah. well um, I think it's just automatic isn't it you yeah. just put your hand down yeah. it doesn't doesn't really matter if you do no. know how to fall it's just you know it's either your wrist or your collarbone yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the way it is so were you out in a group then uh, yeah it was a group ride yeah, and yeah. I just got a little bit too close and someone touched the brake and that was it, went sideways. Yeah, it's just experience. Isn't yeah, it? that's it. Yeah. I haven't done it again since. No, well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lesson learned, isn't it? <laughs> I bet you've got better at um, being in group rides as well. Yeah, and fully. Yeah. So, how did you get into um, multi sport? And... Uh, well, that was my dad as well. Yeah. Um, so, from cycling, um, we kind of took back to running again. Did you go out cycling with your dad? Yeah. And yeah. did you, at that point, did you join a club? No, you, I didn't. You were um, just on your own? Yeah, so my, none of the clubs in the area did kind of youth track. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the closest yeah. one's Lincoln, but that's about an hour yeah, or so away. Right? Um, so, yeah, I kind of went out with the clubs because dad was involved in them. Yeah. But um, I never actually joined any of them. No. Um, yeah, so I did the, did the group rides with them um, and kind of saw what all of them were doing and the track and side and thought, you know what, um, I might want to give this a go. Yeah. But I couldn't swim. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a big thing, isn't it? I was saying to your dad last uh, last episode that if you haven't got that technical ability that some kids like you were doing yeah. running and then table tennis, yeah. kids have been swimming from that, yeah. that, that age and that size, haven't they? You know, yeah. it's just... Um, and it's so technical, isn't it? Yeah. To to it's try and with it. yeah, it takes so much to learn. Um, yeah. But yeah, I couldn't swim, but I could run. Um. So I kind of took to that and tried doing. I did a couple of brick runs and found that it hurt like hell. Um. Uh, trying to do a mile off the bike is very very different to trying to do a five k just straight out. Isn't it? Yeah. Um. So I did that a little bit more. Um. And did you do that? Like was it competitions or was it just no no just, just did it in training training just did a ride and then yeah. dad went on oh, put your trainers on let's yeah, go out yeah. so you did run. it together yeah yeah you were training with your dad basically yeah pretty much yeah just well carrying one side in yeah um, but yeah so kind of did that for what long was it for kind of did it for about a year maybe mm. um, was that all during lockdown all during lockdown yeah um, until the pools opened back up again and dad said right you're getting good at cycling you're yeah. slowly getting better at running again let's get you in the pools and start trying to learn. Yeah, and that was a painful. Process. Yeah, oh, it is, isn't it? And di- and did you um, have lessons 
one to no. one lessons or was it just your dad? No, just dad taught me. Dad was teaching, um, which dad, is great, isn't it? Because yeah, he's got the amazing. experience, isn't it? Dad was teaching a lot of the beginners at Cleefox Try, yeah. which is a club they're at. So yeah. he did the same thing with me at the same time. That's good. Um, and we worked on little bits. You're trying to build from 25 meters, which is all I could swim at first, yeah. to 50, um, and then 100 meters, um, which took a while. <laughs> It was so, you don't really know what it's like until you kind of go into it and you see everyone else doing it and thinking, wow, you made that look easy. Um, yeah, I mean, you, I was just thinking about, we were watching the um, pros at the weekend doing the T100 um, in Singapore and the top top athletes who get out of the water would just make it look effortless. Yeah. And you think, how can they, because they don't look, it doesn't look, some of them are like really laboured and it the the flail in their arms around yeah. all over the place and you think how can you be so fast swimming like that because yeah. it's not graceful is it mm. some of them it just they just slap their arms <laughs> yeah. For the best. yeah yeah that's how it looks but it's obviously not I mean yeah, they've exactly obviously got great technique it, yeah. haven't they yeah. yeah something to it um so yeah uh, from that so that was December time I think. Um, and we went into the new year and carried on training and yeah. stuff and I entered my first triathlon uh, which was supposed to be the Lincolnshire Edge that was June no May yeah that was May what and year was this 20 2021 2021 yeah 2021 yeah. Yeah. Um, so I entered that in 2021 and it got to the end of April so I was kind of at the back end of it preparing for it going yeah do you know what I can do this mm. oh and it was an open water as well I don't know why I did open water first um, I didn't go for a pool one, but then that got cancelled because they couldn't get permission. Mm. So it was kind of a, a well, it kind of kicked the batty because uh, I've been training for it and things. Yeah. Uh, but then I entered a different one, uh, which was maybe a month and a half later. Right. Uh, called Loco Park down in Derby. Okay. Um, so we went travelled down there and did that race, and that was another open water one. Right. I shouldn't and have done that. Had you done any open water before? Uh, I'd done three swims in the sea. With a wetsuit on. With a wetsuit on. Yeah. Um, well, that's more than some people do. Some people, well, just, yeah. some people just rock up and don't yeah. even give it any thought and just yeah. go and do it. And then they wonder why they have a panic attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you'd been in, I mean, the sea, that's, that's, something, else. that's something else, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so from the sea yeah. to the lake or whatever it was. Yeah, it's a lake. So yeah, yeah. That was a different and how did it go? I came last out of the water, <laughs> but I did it. Yeah, you um, got round, that's amazing. Yeah, that's isn't amazing. It? I went out like an absolute bullet. Dad was watching it from the sidelines and had a video of me. And uh, it was a Anchor Young video of me at 500 metres. And at 200, I was kind of up there with the front pack and yeah. I just went further and further. Back. 750 swim. Yeah. Sprint, was it? Yeah, yeah. sprint yeah, distance. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. tough. It's a yeah. baptism of fire, isn't it? Your yeah. first your first open just water. Just got to get through it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the bike was good. I think I passed it the third fastest for my age. But yeah. that's because I had that cycling background. Sure. That's what I've been working on for a year. Um, and then the run to until well the first mile was bad the second mile was okay um because i kind of got my legs back and then the third mile dad was running with me because i was like i can't do this anymore <laughs> please help <laughs> but then finished it um, yeah and did the relays later that year uh, is that a that, not again yeah the not one mm. i do enjoy them it's nice just to have a team around yeah it's cool it's a good day out isn't yeah, it it's I a really, really good day out really nice social you know if you take especially if you have a club there that's yeah. great Great. We've done it a couple of times, well, a few times, yeah. And it is a really nice event, yeah. Uh, so, it'd be better if I could do it with people my age, I think, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the problem is, especially I, you've probably found an age group the, at your age, and Harry's finding this as well. Um, there isn't that it's not competitive no. at all, but they just there's hardly anybody in, yeah, which is great in one sense from yeah. a qualification point of view, yeah. But you like to race, yeah, you know, your, your peers, don't you? Yeah, you're racing against. 30, 40 year old men that have yeah. already got the advantage over Yeah, yeah. yeah. But even then, it, it makes it slightly easier. Yeah, but I mean, you've got youth on your side and, and it'll progress and you'll get beat. Yeah, that's it. Get better and better um, and you'll be beating your dad soon. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the plan. Well, I can get him at sprint, just not quite. Yeah, early, well, you yeah. know. Yeah. So. After your first um, triathlon, what was next? What did you do? Um, I kind of spent the winter just trying to get better at it. Yeah. Um, Is that the only one you did that year? That was the only one I did that yeah. year. Oh, and the relays. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I spent the winter trying to get better. Mm. And then the following year uh, was when I decided, you know what, let's take it a little bit seriously. Yeah. Um, let's give it a little bit of a go and start training properly. So I started training through that year. Um, when did I join? Uh, I got a co coaching company. I can't remember if it was the end of 2021 or end of 2022. Mm. It was one of the two. Yeah. It might have been 2021, actually. Yeah. Um, so, 20... How 
Yes, yeah, 2021. 2021. Um, at the back end of that year was when I decided I wanted to start taking it a little bit more seriously. And how old were you then? So 15. 15. 15 turning 16. Um, so, yeah, um, I basically saw it on Facebook and they were putting up, oh, we've got a month free trial. And I messaged them on Wynn thinking it was a scam. Um, and I was like, oh, do you know what? Maybe I can put myself into this. And who was this? Uh, that was with entire performance. Oh, coaching. yeah, we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I got a reply and they said, yeah, we're doing a free trial. We've got a space uh, if you'd like to give it a go. And where are they based? Uh, down in Cardiff. Right. Uh, okay. All of the athletes are part of the Cardiff performance team. Um, ah, okay. You've got Freddie Webb and Josh yeah. Lewis and a lot of them. Lot that do Did it. you ever meet Jamie Price? No. No. Okay. Because he was, he was part of that group oh, okay. when he was at uni. Um, and he's been on the podcast. That's oh, all right. Okay. They probably know him to be fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah. A lot of them are like top top athletes. Yeah. Josh is going into seventy point three Ironman races now, and he's got his pro license. Right. Um. And a lot of them are starting to go longer as well. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So they got a message back, and I joined their group mm -hmm. or joined their coaching company and did a month with them. And I tell you, I did do a race. I got my years confused in October, the mm -hmm. middle of October that year, and I was with them from September until October. And I think I knocked off 15 minutes from my time from Loco Park to uh, Ghoul, which was that yeah. triathlon, right. in the space of a month of proper training with them. Wow. Which that's, was, that's pretty impressive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It was, Just having that focus and Yeah, it was just being in. told what to do. Yeah. Um, the swim time was the main thing. Mm. I mean, I couldn't do, um, I think my 400 time was about 8 minutes 30. Which isn't still, I mean, it is. that's not bad. It's not bad. It's from starting from yeah. scratch, you yeah. know what I mean? It's not not slow, that. No, it was okay, um, but that's more testament to Dad for yeah. <laughs> teaching me pretty yeah. well. Um, but then that race, I posted a 7.10. That's good. Um, which was already yeah. over a minute. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah. It was just something else, just yeah. seeing those goals on a piece of paper. Work. Like, yeah, it was just like, yeah. oh, do you know what? Because you, you, I guess you're always a bit unsure of actually... you. Whether it is going to work, you've got to trust yeah. in the process, haven't you? Yeah. To, to, and then you, when you get the result, like you just yeah. said, it's like, oh, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is what I need. I find triathlon training weird because you never kind of go as far as you do in a race. You never see yeah. how amazing you're going to do in that race from your training. You're kind of doing stuff just below mm. what you'd expect, just above, mm. um, and thinking, how the hell am I going to hold this? Because there's no chance in doing it. I remember doing track wrecks, uh, track wrecks now. And some of them are like, I'll oh, do it at 5.20 pace, or at your 5k pace. And I'm going, I can't hold this for even a mile. How am I going to do this for free, uh, for three miles? And then you get to the race and it's fine. It's just there. something about being in a race. You've got it, haven't you? Yeah. And you've put the other two things in front of yeah. that as well, yeah. which is like... Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, did that, saw the performance and um, I went to them and said, look, is there any way I can stay on? I'm really enjoying mm -hmm. it. Um, you've, well, more than proved yourself. And they were like, yeah, you can. Um but it's two hundred pounds a month, right? And at fifteen, sixteen, I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I can't do Not that. Not doable, is it? Not really doable." No. Um, so we kind of had a back and forth for a couple of weeks, going, "How can we work this out? What can we do?" Um, and we came up with a plan to do an ambassador program. Okay. Um, so it meant I was on kind of a reduced rate, but in return, I kind of big them up on social media and do all of this um promo for promos them. for yeah. them um so at 60 i was like yes thank you because that 50 pound a month meant so at the time mum and dad were kind of giving me an allowance yeah um to use and i pretty much just shoved all of it on triathlon but what a great you know from a, a young kid yeah what a great way to use that allowance yeah. i mean you, your dad must have been like oh yeah absolutely thrilled yeah you know i mean a lot of kids are just like wasting it on whatever on they whatever. waste it on these yeah. days and you, you for you to do that that just shows maturity and also focused didn't it? yeah yeah I, and it was just something i really enjoyed it was kind of something that set me different from everyone else yeah. and i just I just loved doing it um, and on that how many like even now how many people that you know like at, at kevig's or whatever yeah. do do multi-sport triathlons uh there's Is, no one no no a lot of it's football there's a couple yeah. of runners um, yeah, but no, no one that does three sports. It's no. which is incredible, really, isn't yeah. it? If you think about it, considering the location where we are, and you've got all the different clubs. I mean, there's two here in Louth. Yeah. You've got Grimsby and yeah. Cleethorpes Triathlon. Yeah. There's Lincoln. There's Boston. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just like, it's quite a hotbed of of triathlon yeah, and right. multi sport, really. And it's to think that there's nobody. I don't know anyone my age that's in kind of 
well, actually tell I know one person my yeah. age, but he's just outside Lincolnshire. Yeah. Um, that do it. No, no, seventeen, no eighteen, no one. Yeah, that's um, incredible. Which is a bit of a shame for the sport, it is, really. It really is. Because we've got the sea. Yeah. We've got the flats going down towards Louth and this yeah. area, and then you've got the hills. Exactly. That's pretty much what your dad said. Yeah. You know, you know, we've got it. We've got the sea. We've got. Yeah. We've got everything really. You've got lakes if you just want lakes, to travel forty yeah. minutes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame that. It's amazing. I mean, I'm stuck in my ways as well, and I'm guilty of it. But I'll kind of do the same routes and stuff just because I know where they are and things. But you feel safe for doing that, though. I think. I yeah. mean, I'm pretty pretty much the same when I go out. I like to do the same routes that I've always done for yeah. years and years because it's what I know. Yeah, that's it. You know, and I know the work. Yeah. So. But if you just want to go and move, well, go twenty minutes out of your way, it's gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, yeah. makes training much easier. Yeah, it does. I mean, the other day I just packed up my running shoes in the car and went into the wolds for my hour easy run, and it made it much easier. No traffic and no. Just that's yeah, it. the roads are great. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Um, sorry, I digressed us there. Um, <laughs> so you were talking about you, you got you got the ambassadorship. Now did that work out then? Yeah, that worked out well. Yeah, um, it meant that I can could kind of afford it. So from uh, they started it in November. Um, so from November until February, um, I was able to fund that off of what mum and dad were giving yeah. me. Um, and then I did my lifeguard qualification in February. Uh, Excellent. When I was able to earn my own money and pay for it myself. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but they kept me on the ambassador program just because even then, hundred and fifty or two hundred quid a month was still a bit too yeah, much, yeah. which was great of them. Yeah. Um, so they have really been a key driver in yeah. what I've been. And are you still to with do. them today? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've been with them for two and a half years now. Yeah. And um, still seeing progress on them. That's it. Well, you will. I mean, you like to say you're eighteen, so it's going to continue, yeah. isn't it? You haven't even scratched the surface yet yeah, of what it. you what you're capable of doing. So. Yeah. No, that's a really nice story, actually, for them to actually realise that somebody's interested at your age. Yeah. Like we've just said about there isn't that many people around and, and not saying, no, it's 200 quid and, you know, yeah, and then putting you it. off completely. Yeah. That's, no, that's really good. So kudos to Entire. We'll give them a big up there oh, yeah, for that. Um, and I'll, I'll go as far as putting a link in the, in the show notes for them after, after that. Yeah. So we'll, Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll do that. Yeah. So, after you'd, you'd done the um, race in October, yeah. you had the winter to, train winter to train with them. Yeah, and I decided I was going to go big, because as with everything in my life, I either go big or go home. So I decided I wanted to go for performance assessments and um, right. the super series yeah. kind of thing. So just explain what that is for people who are not sure. Yeah, so it's kind of a series of races that the top people in our age go to and you've got to go through a qualification kind of thing for it so you did an intelligent race day so this is for um to become a gb athlete it was for british level racing british level yeah. racing right um because there's tiers to it isn't there yeah um so yeah this was kind of the first standard of super series racing um a lot of people in there did have england tri suits and gb suits yeah. Um, but obviously I've done two triathlons up to this point and thought, you know what, let's give it a yeah. crack. What's well, nice why not? Then? I mean, you've got to see that finds you the level in where you're yeah. at, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. Um, so over that winter was kind of the main goal was, so performance assessments was April. So I had six months from November when I came back from uh, my off season uh, where I had two weeks off to try and get my butt in gear and mm. try and get really fast. Uh, so we joined so it was kind of a sit down chat it was kind of a week long thing where we sat going so how can we do this we knew my bike was strong yeah i was able to push about 280 watts at that point uh, for my ftp so <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not sloppy is yeah. it i can't even do that now <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah and um, that was something we knew would kind of put me in good stead and then when i went to the ird um which was all just on bikes it was assessing your bike handling and whether you'd kind of be a good fit or not um, mm. i was able to keep up with the guys at the front Sure. The main question is what happens when I get off the bike and run and what happens at the start for the swim. Yeah. Uh, so my swim time at that point was seven minutes, 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, and so the main one was going, how do we drop that? What are we going to do in six months that mean we can drop that down from seven minutes, 10 to the standard was below six minutes yeah. uh, to even move on to the performance assessments. Um, so we did, uh, so we looked at it. We had a local swim club called Cleethorpes and District Swimming Cads. Um, and we sent them a message and said, look, this is what we're trying to do. Is there any way you can support me in that? Um, and they said, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I joined them in November time and started out in the lower squad with the 12 and 13 year olds, which mm. was a humbling experience. Mm. Uh, getting lapped by them and literally looking like a fish out of water. Yeah. It was awful. Yeah, yeah. 
Because you think you're a decent swimmer and you go and swim with those guys and it's just... It's but again, it's all about levels. It's like we said earlier. It's all about levels. They, those kids have been doing it since... I don't know, since they were born. You oh. know what I mean? And it, when you've been doing that and it's like, it's natural to them because yeah. they've got all that technical skill. They'll have, they'll have learned all that without even thinking about oh, it. Yeah. You yeah. know, whereas... As That's we all it. know, if you've just if you've just started and you've never done it before, it's just so hard and yeah. frustrating. Yeah, it takes so long as well. Because one minute you can see loads of improvement, and you're sat at the same thing for four months. You're yeah. just like, when's it gonna come? Yeah. Just please. Yeah, yeah. Um, see, so yeah, I joined that in November, and worked with them, and see, well, from November till January, I was in kind of their low, well, lower squad, um, trying to get myself decent. <laughs> And I went to him and said, look, I think I've, I've got all the skills now. Can you move me up into something that's just going to absolutely break me mm. every single week? So I can, because at that point I had three months and I was getting yeah. nervous. And I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I really need to sort something out. Um, so they went, yeah, okay, we'll try you in there. We'll put you in the end lane. Um, you can sit there and suffer and we'll see what happens. And for about a month and a half, it was dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely awful. Um, I was getting out the pool to spew. I was um, having to stop on the wall and gasping and getting out the sessions. My arms ripped off, um, and then something clipped up, clicked after about a month and a half. Mm. Um, and that was a point where I was a bit like, "Can I keep doing this?" Because obviously, breaking yourself every week like that is yeah. it's not nice. Um, and I did a four hundred time trial, and those three months I've gone from seven minutes ten to six minutes fifteen. Which is that's massive, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely, huge. absolutely massive in that short space yeah. of time. Just for swimming as well, because yeah. what was that, fifty-five seconds or whatever. It's that just is insane. huge, and the people I guess everybody who listens to this knows about triathlon generally, yeah. so they know how impressive that is. But yeah. anybody outside would be thinking, oh, that's, that's five seconds. <laughs> but unless you've actually experienced and done it to try and get your time down, is just yeah, yeah, well done. So that was hell on earth. But then that kind of it gave me a little bit of a boost and said, Look, let's give it some, let's give it a little bit more, let's see what we can do. Yeah. Because uh, I was still 15 seconds off even being able to go through. Yeah, yeah. Um, the IRD was in February. Um, so I did that absolutely fine. They said, yeah, you're all good to go. What's the IRD? Uh, intelligent Race Day. So okay. they kind of teach you how to race draft legal right. um, and make sure you're safe on the bike, make sure you're going to not impede other people, mm. not going to be right off the back, so you're getting lapped and causing the... Um, well, making it more dangerous yeah. for everyone. Um, so you go through that and you're with different coaches and they teach you their turns and they teach you chicanes and all this. It was really cool. Yeah, I really that's a great it. experience. Yeah, and just racing against or looking at the people at the top and going, wow. <laughs> um, it was something that, oh, I was looking at going, yeah, I want to be like you, I want to get there, I want to get to that point. Mm. Um, so yeah, I passed that day easy enough and it was a case of, can I knock 15 seconds off in about a month and a half? Uh, so carried on swimming, carried on cycling, um, carried on running, um, and then it got to that day, so the day of uh, the performance assessments, which were down in Nottingham, I think mm. they were, uh, yeah, down at the university. Okay. Um, and we went in there, uh, Dad was doing Manchester Marathon, so I was there, uh, there by myself, trying to, um, well, trying to do the time, went in, and I swam a 5.56. Wow. So I literally just made the cut off. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that meant that I was right, right at the back. I was starting at the back, but I just thought, you know, to make the start line, it was something that I was, I was proud of. Yeah, yeah. From seven ten. To Absolutely, five, yeah, that was amazing. In this, in the short space of time as well. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. So, um, yeah, so it was on two separate days. So it was a swim on a Saturday, and then you did a bike and a run on the Sunday. Yeah. Um, sadly, I got to Sunday and felt a bit off, and I think it was more nerves than anything because mm. obviously I've done two triathlons. Um, and they'd gone into this top race and I got to the start line I was just like I can't do this I feel sick um, and then they were like well if you feel sick and you're dizzy and this we can't let you start for safety yeah. reasons yeah, yeah. Um, so I didn't start it um, and kind of went away disappointed and a bit like what, what, what could have been done? what could have been I mean I was right at the back by about 26 seconds I think the next person to me mm. um, but I might have been strong on the bike you just don't know no do you? you don't um, so yeah I kind of went away from that um, and then started off the season in April, but yeah. uh, as a lot stronger swimmer because yeah, of the yeah. work I'd done over the winter, which kind of I mean, a bit. disappointing obviously, yeah. but all that said, the experience that you've picked up mm. from just putting yourself in that position, knowing that it was going to be, yeah, you know, it's going to be a hard task, wasn't it, with the yeah. swim and stuff, but. The experience that you've you've picked up from the swimming has improved yeah. massively, and also your bike. Yeah, it's just you know just doing that bike course and 
Yeah. Learning how to draft and stuff, it's just it's invaluable, isn't it? Yeah. Where else would you get taught you're that? You know, yeah. so that you've got to pick the positives out of yeah. it, really. Yeah, definitely. So I wish I'm sure you you did. Yeah, and well, I went to the coach and he said, "Well, what have you learned?" And uh, a lot of it was that swim, that bike, and yeah. I think the main thing was the mental side of it, because um, I'd never really been good under pressure. We felt that with table tennis, it gets to a final and it's five five and ten yeah. ten, and I just bottle it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so trying to look back and go. What what have you done? What can you do in the future so you're not going to get those yeah. rest day nerves? So yeah, you're not yeah. going to, or so they can't not start you in the future and they have an excuse for that. Um, so that season was more just let's focus on building those nerves. Let's race as much as possible. Um, let's let's build up experience because you've done two triathlons. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We forget about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's it. You've done two triathlons and then you go and try and, and I try out on yeah, that. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. So I kind of did things a bit too quick, and looking back, I maybe would have taken it a bit slower. Yeah. Um, but you live and you learn, don't you? Well, and also you've got a lot of experience. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, it's it's cool. Yeah. No, ch- chapeau for um for <laughs> trying. That's all I can <laughs> say. It's just it's it's a great that's a great story in itself within your story. Yeah. Uh, for even giving it a go, and being committed to coaching and getting coached. And coming on and putting the work in and, yeah. and getting there is just brilliant, yeah. great stuff. So what was what was next? Uh, so lots and lots of races. Um, yeah. We did so. Dad so this would be twenty twenty two. Uh, twenty two. Yeah. 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 That was twenty two. So dad did. Dad was training for Ironman Italy at the time, so I was kind of tagging along with him and yeah. doing little bits in and out. Um, I was still swimming with the swim club. Um, time didn't really drop. Mm. Uh, possibly because I mean I wasn't putting as much in. I didn't have the, sure. Um, the end goal of it all um, but I, I was still there. I think I got the quiet, fastest I got was about 5.42 um, <laughs> which is ridiculous which is still quick it but is yeah. really quick yeah, yeah but then the thing was I had this experience looking at the top guys and they were swimming for I think the fastest and they was 4.32 so one post it yeah um, and I was looking at that going I'm still a minute and 10 out and that kind of shifted my mindset and didn't help at all really no. which is one of the things I regret about it yeah I mean, obviously, you've got to take your your yeah. age into consideration then as well when you're thinking about these things. You think, but actually, if you think about where you'd come yeah, to get, even get there, I mean, all right, they're like four and a half minutes. But yeah. again, like we go, we sound like a broken record, but they'll have been swimming and swimming from the from they were about four or five. So yeah. you know, to to even get close to that yeah. is just it's incredible. Yeah, but I just I was just too guilty of yeah. comparing myself to everyone else. That yeah, didn't help mentally. No. Um, because the bike, I could compare myself and go, do you know what? I'm up there. Yeah. Um, the run, I was slowly starting to win things. Um, so I was doing a lot of local races and things like that, and getting mm. age group wins. And um, I was going, yeah, do you know what? I'm good at that. But swimming, I was still looking at those guys going, yeah. you're a minute and ten off, rather yeah. than looking at myself and yeah. going, well, you're about two minutes quicker than you were yeah. literally eight months ago. Yeah. Which is we're doing two triathlons. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing two triathlons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Something you just forget. Um, yeah. So yeah, because you just focus on one thing, don't you? Yeah. You focus on. We all do it. We're all guilty of focusing on the, the, the bad, yeah. bad part of it yeah. instead of like the positive, because that's just natural. I think that's just what yeah. we do, and it takes somebody from the outside to say, "Hang on." Yeah. You know, which I'm sure you you yeah, had. Yeah, that's what I'm really grateful to Freddie Webb for, who's my coach, um, from entire. You basically yeah. get matched based off personality and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was like, "We'll just take a step back. Mm-hmm. We'll just use this season for practice, but look at where you've come." Yeah. Um, and when I was doing bike sessions when I was doing swim sessions he used to send me things that I'd done about four months ago and he'd go well you did this four months ago look at this session now you've just pushed 20 more watts than you had done four months ago Yeah. you've just swam that 400 metres five seconds than you did four months ago um, let's look at that because this season's not about not about winning it they'll come but yeah. let's let's just focus on that it's the long game isn't it yeah really and triathlon is a long long game yeah it is well it's, it's like i said to your to your dad when i was speaking to him it's, it's a lifestyle it becomes yeah. a lifestyle it's for us yeah. you know everything about it it's what it's what we do it's just you as a person yeah um, yeah but you're always chasing that perfection as well aren't you and you're never going to get it no i think that's what well, i think that's so it's, it's yeah but it's realizing that it doesn't exist because yeah. you're just moving on. Yeah, that's you know, it. hopefully you're always moving forward. Sometimes you move backwards. Yeah. You know, but it's just that it's it's enjoying the journey, I think, which yeah. is the most important thing. And yeah. the process. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, I moved through that year, um, and kind of did some races, um, gained a bit more experience and then we went away to the south of France for three weeks. 
and right. that, that was amazing. Yeah. And we spent three weeks, me and dad, cycling in the mountains. Wow. He was doing his Ironman training, so it was long rides uh, in the pool every day at six o'clock. Um, proper training camp. Proper training camp. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah, and uh, we came off the back of that. I was the fittest I've ever been. Mm. Um, that absolutely felt amazing. Um, and then we did, I think we did one more race. Yeah, we won. It was Beaver Castle. Mm. Um, the first time it had been put on. Okay. Um, so we went in there, kind of wrecked it, and I came third overall in that race wow. out of about 300 people that were all older than me and all this stuff um and how old were you then uh would have been 16 16 uh, <laughs> <laughs> brilliant so yeah third overall on that one um and then won my age group by something silly like 11 or 12 minutes yeah. um so how did that make you feel it was nice because i'd finally seen do you know what this is what could be yeah. um i i've done that on a see it on a race that's it was brutal it was hilly mm. it was i mean the run was a mile flat and then two miles uphill it was um, something else that I'd never done before. And my swim time, I averaged 131 per 100 for the 750, which was something like six minutes faster than Loco Park. Um, it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, part of that might be a wetsuit that I bought, but it, it can never affect us with the swimming. Can doesn't, it doesn't account for all the hard uh, work that you put in and yeah. the, the, you know, the improvement that you've gained. Yeah, so, yeah, brilliant. So yeah, we went into the winter of that one, um, and at that point, so I was turning 17, so I just started uh, started college, and then that's when things kind of took a dive. Um, yeah. you, you see it when, so I see it in the people I'm swimming with, um, when I started swimming with CADS at 16, or, yeah, no, yeah, 16, yeah. Um, the people I was swimming with, I'm swimming with one person that was swimming there at the age of 16, and yeah. he's quitting at the end of this year. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of that age where everyone goes, do I stay? Do I not? Starts to do. Yeah, to do. I mean, you can understand it to a degree, be especially for for somebody like that, I guess, who's been swimming all his life and mm. he's got to a standard and he's not probably reached where he yeah. wanted to get. He might have got county, but he's not done nationals. He might have yeah. got nationals, but he's not gone to the net. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, well, do I want to continue to do this or do I want to have a life, yeah. especially in swimming? Oh yeah. You know where you it's brutal, isn't it? Yeah. Twice a day and. Yeah, you know, so you, yeah, else. you can you can get that. You yeah, get that. I see it, but then I kind of went to that point myself, and I was like, do I want to keep doing this, or yeah. do I want to go to parties that my yeah. friends were throwing? Because yeah, they were yeah. things that I was sacrificing yeah. to be able to train the next day and to be able to try and do this. Yeah. Um, and that year was kind of me umming and ahhing about that yeah. and tossing with it. But that was twenty twenty three, which is my year where I'd gone. Well, when I sat down with the coach and gone twenty twenty three, that's when we didn't make form assessment, so that's when we're going to go for age group and see if we can make worlds and yeah. Um, like so <clears throat> it's a balance, isn't it? You yeah. know what I mean. You've got to have a life. Yeah. Because this is you didn't you didn't hit the target for the performance center, yeah. so you're not of that caliber, but you still want to progress in the sport, yeah. but you still want to have a life and be. a be a young yeah, adult yeah. and ju enjoy all the things that come with that yeah. as well so it it's hard isn't it i mean it's it never gets any easier because no. you you know you even as you gr you get older you still need that balance you yeah. still need to enjoy yourself and go out and socialize and yeah. but you still need to train yeah. um so it is it's it's not an easy it's i think it's harder at your age yeah. um but it's never easy to 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 get that balance um yeah. so you you just um Hinted there at age group. So how did that whole thing come about? Um, what was, I was looking at, you know, when British try to put the big flow chart. Yeah. Where it's kind of like try star one, yeah. move up into academies, move up into super series, and you've got kind of a branch out that goes onto age group. Mm. I was like, oh, what's that? I've mm. never seen it before. Right. Um, and that was just after I'd won that race at Beaver Castle. Okay. Um, so we came off the back of that and we went into an early off season because uh, I didn't have any more races I might as well was this 2023? Uh, that was still 2022, 2022. the back end of two mm. um, so we kind of looked and went well what do you want from next season um, performance assessments you didn't do you didn't do well you got your swim time this year but do you want to try again next year or was it too much yeah. or um, do you want to go on and try something different uh, so we looked at age groups and said maybe this could be a thing we can go into mm. it and see what happens i didn't really know much about it so just going back on the the performance yeah what age can you go up to to try and qualify uh, for that you can try up to 20 or you can try up to any age i think right um, but the one i was on was uh, the under 
was junior. No, junior is over 18, so right. it was the one below junior. Right, okay. Um, and you just move up age groups. Yeah. But the more you move up, the longer your distance gets. So I was doing a super sprint. Right. Um, but then you move up and it's into sprint distance. Um, and at that point, they're swimming about nine minutes for their 750. Yeah. They're going, well, crazy speeds on the bike, but I'd be able to keep with that. And then their yeah. run's about 17, 18. Do you think you'll ever revisit it? I might do. Yeah. Um, it Not wanting to put any pressure on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends what happens with uni, I think. Cost. Um, Has Hull got a, just diversing again, yeah. has Hull got a, a, a triathlon club? I don't think so. No. Um, it'd be something to start, wouldn't it? When you've got to have three people for a society. It's true. Yeah. Uh, they've got a lot of facilities, though. They've got the swim pool, yeah. John Charles up there. Yeah. Um, and then they've got the track that's on uh, the whole site. So I could do something. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. But even then, if I'm staying here, I'll put all this stuff. Of course, yeah, you now. don't you don't need it, do you? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's cool. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a just yeah. a thought. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't actually considered that, but no. it might be something. Because I, I know a lot of them, a lot of them do have uh, triathlon clubs. Yeah. Within, uh, the unis, but it's yeah, like we like we've already said, it's not a common thing, is it? Mm. So yeah, so you found this pathway going on the 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 triathlon website, British triathlon website, yeah. uh, for the age group. And so that's the direction that you decided you were going to go in. Yeah, so I decided at the end of 22 I would. Um, yeah. And then the start of 23 happened and I decided I wanted to be a kid. Um, yeah. And I kind of focused more on that. I was yeah. uh, going out with friends. I was um, partying. I was still training there and then. Um, but I missed sight of that, I think, um, a bit too much until April time where I had my first race and I did awfully. <laughs> and I was like... Oh, well, that was, that was a bit of a but shock. But it's, it's like, well, yeah, but it's, you know, it's a, again, it's a learning yeah. experience, isn't it? Because you, oh, well, if I want to be where I was, then yeah. I've got to put the got put the training in. And it's like anything, you only get out of it what you put in yeah. right, at the end of the day. Yeah. But I think you then come to a decision, like you yeah. obviously did, decided to what actually yeah. is more important. Yeah, so even then, throughout April until June time, I still was on an hour about it. It yeah. took a little while. Yeah. Um, Which is good. Then you don't rush into it, do yeah. you? you know what I mean? Yeah, you've got to consider you actually things. give it yeah. some some solid thought. Yeah, but it got to June. It was kind of the turning point. I was like, do I quit? Do I not? Do I carry on? Um, and Dad just said to me, well, look, you've entered Cardiff now, which was the draft legal one. Um, go and go and do it. You're in it. You might as well. I'm going down and doing the Olympic. Um, see what you think. Was that qual- no? That wasn't a qualifier. Right? Uh, it was a world qualifier. Oh, it was a world yeah, qualifier. Um, yeah. But stupidly, I didn't think that I was going to do well, so I didn't register my right. Intent. Okay. Um, because I hadn't trained properly up to it, um, which is probably you know in hindsight it's probably a good thing because then yeah. there's no pressure on yeah, you to no try. Yeah, I just went and did it. Did it, yeah. Um, so yeah, we went down to that race and I was still I wasn't fit. Um, but I wasn't not fit. I could finish the distance, but I wasn't going to do it in any kind of PB shape. Sure. Um, and the swim was the thing I was scared of, and then we get there and they announce it's a non wetsuit swim, so I was like, oh my days, <laughs> I'm going to drown here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so he yeah. says doing like five minutes, <laughs> well, whatever it was. It definitely wasn't. No, I know it wasn't <laughs> then, but you know that's. But that yeah. is now funny because psychologically you're thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to drown here, but you've been swimming, not then, but yeah. at times at five minutes, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but you still have that mentally. You yeah. still have when we all do it. You know, yeah. we, you do all this swimming, and then you get to an open water swim, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's just <laughs> the doubt game. goes in, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, um, non wetsuit swim kind of changed my head. Yeah. Um, Had you done one before? No, no, I don't haven't. think I've ever done one either. To be honest, it was it was literally on cut off because um, mm. the British triathlon says twenty three degrees, but then the world triathlon that they base it off because it was a world qualifier twenty two, so right. it literally hit twenty two point one, and they went that's it, no wetsuits because it was a world qualifier. Um, so we went allowed them. Um, mm. So yeah, we were all. It was literally about ten minutes before start, so everyone was in wetsuits, yeah. um, and it was just a tannoy over, and people were panicking and rushing about, which was something I never had before as well, because no. usually you're there, you're set, you're ready to go ten minutes before. Um, but yeah, it was like leaving expensive agility yeah, wetsuits yeah, all yeah. at the swim start because everyone was just ripping them off themselves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did that. Came out the water where I'd expected to be near the back group. Um, and went on the bike and was like, well, this is my ball game. Let's rip it a little bit. Let's Did you enjoy that? Yeah. It's a good course, isn't it? I loved it? it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. And that's what kind of sparked it again. Mm. Um, the, the bike was just amazing. It was riding with everyone, everyone screaming at each other to go and do some work. <laughs> you have people sat on your wheel just literally doing nothing. Yeah. Um, I just enjoyed rolling around the group because obviously it was 
was my game. That's Fun. what I'm used to. Yeah. So I was running on the group shouting at people, move up, get up, do some work, come on. <laughs> yeah. They were like, they probably hated me. Yeah. I've got some 17-year-old <laughs> kids telling you what to do. Yeah, bossing you about. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I had great fun on the bike and I came off second. Um, well done. Second in my age. I didn't know that at the time. Mm. Not until I'd come off the run and that's where I felt I had drained. Um, that's where it all started to unravel. Yeah. I got about a mile in. Gone out like a bullet. I think I did a 540 mile or something. Um, and then dad came running next to me and he was going, you're second, you're second, you're second. Just keep going, just keep going. Um, and then you go off around the dock, don't you? Mm. Um, so I was carry on going. It was about 32 degrees yeah, or something. Yeah, I remember when I did it, it was really, really hot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't do well under heat. No. Which makes, it's going to make Tora Molinos really, really funny at the end of the year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Might have cooled down back. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, but yeah, so I was absolutely flagging. Um, and third place was about five seconds behind me by the time I came back in um, mm. to, well, to go down the finishing shoot. And dad was stood there and he, he was like, oh, you're still second place, you're doing fine. Then I saw his face drop and he realised that the guy was behind me and he started running next to me and he was going, go, 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 he's right behind you, go, keep going, keep going. And I was like, I can't, I'm going as far as I can, and like whinging at him. Um, and he was like, go, you're literally second place right now, uh, just keep running. And I looked behind me and saw him there and I literally felt him and that was it, I just kicked and went. Um, but it was more knowing that I had that speed in the back of my head yeah. that went, oh, do you know what, I, I can do I can this do for this. another 800 metres. Yeah. I've done 800 metres at this pace before, Yeah. Um, even with like, less training. But then I came second on that. Um, Brilliant. I kicked myself for not registering my intent and not believing in well, myself. Well, you know, it, it gives you, <coughs> it, it did what it needed to do didn't yeah. it, at the end of the day. Yeah, so. um, it kind of shifted my mindset into, do you know what, your it was the first age group race I'd done and I was like, Well, you're at the top end of this. Yeah. At least give it a go. Yeah. Um give it some whack. You managed to do it off of not really much summer training. Um so yeah. Um I then went to do Sunderland um mm. and I made sure I registered my intent this time. Mm. It wasn't a sprint, it was a standard and it was the first standard I'd done. Yeah. Um and to this day still the first standard I've done. Yeah. Um but it was a month between June and July. So that month was just Full on. Full on. Let's see what shape I can get into. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, I didn't have that aerobic base. You would have had if I'd done a full uh, thing of training, but I could get to the point where I could swim 1,500 metres again in a semi-decent time. Mm. It wasn't amazing. Um, the bike was just a case of keep it ticking over because I still had that, and the run was being able to run double the distance off yeah. the bike, which I'd never done before. Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? It's difficult. Yeah. It's I really hard. found that with the distance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, race day came on Sunderland um, and I can't remember who said it, it must have been at the start line or something, but someone said, oh, we're only, only four people are in this race, um, in your range. And that kind of was like, there's only four people that can qualify, isn't there? So it was a, it was a case of just get within that 115%. Yeah. And that's all it was. And there was a dude, he, he did a 209 or something for that course, which was, it was insane. It was hilly, it was... The run was awful at that. Did you go there? No. It was no. literally like you had four laps of the run and each one was just a hill like that right. and it felt awful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I went through that. The swim wasn't non wet at this time, but it was 10 degrees the water. Yeah. It was cold. Northeast. Yeah. <laughs> cold, cold. Um, which kind of suited me a bit more, but didn't when I came out the water and couldn't get my wetsuit off to mm. lift my shoulders up because they were frozen. Um, but it was the first time in the swim I've gone, do you know what? this this is really cold and a cold water shock and I was trying yeah. to calm myself down and yeah, then yeah. trying to swim max and keep on to people that was a whole new experience yeah. Um, so yeah came out the water from that one um, what happened was at the back again to be fair um, and kind of went on the bike and because of my weight and things hills suit me a bit more yeah, so I was able to um, push that and make up a bit of time um, and then the run was just survival um, and <laughs> But till mile two, it was fine. Mm. Three, four, and five was dreadful. And then I saw, so I was sat in third place off the bike. Mm. Um, and somehow between four and five, I kind of closed the gap a little bit on him. Um, and I saw him on mile five. So I just I absolutely wrecked it on the final lap to try and catch up to him. And I got him on my shoulder. And then stupidly, I wear a bright print tire suit, which he'd seen at the start. So he sees me charging at him. And um, it was about 200 metres from the finish, I think. And I was trying to get the sneak on him. Saw the print tricep. That was it. He was He's gone. gone. He, was just, he was just bolted. Yeah. So I'm going to buy a black tricep. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, qualified. I came third on that one. Brilliant. And got my spot. So, yeah. Great. Um, Job but, done. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. 
I just figured I was at 111 percent, I think. Yeah. Um. So I was I was in the time, yeah. and I just thought, you know, what better qualifying? I've got not a great year. Absolutely. Um, yeah, hundred percent. That's that's really really good, and that's for Tormalina. Yeah. Back end of the year. Yeah, back end of this year. Yeah. Good. Well, I hope that goes well for you. Thank you. Um. You'll have a great time. It's a great experience. Yeah. Um. And you'll get your suit and everything. Have yeah. you got it yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Um, Cads and Swim Club are trying to find a couple of sponsors for me just to cover a bit yeah. of costs. Good. Um, but once that's all in, I'll get it ordered. Yeah. And get it here. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. And uh, on the back of that, your dad found out about age group, didn't he? he was yeah. Saying, and um, he, he, he followed came, in your footsteps. Yeah, he came in at eleven thirty at night or something in shock. Yeah. And, uh, going, I've got an email, and he showed me it, and I was like, what? <laughs> um, How did he, you do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he did Sunderland as well yeah. on the same day, yeah. um, and he didn't even consider it. Um, I think his coach just told him to register it on a whim and just go, well, you're yeah. doing it, you might as well just put it in. Yeah. Well, like I said to him, you know, just put your, it used to be a tenner, it's yeah. 12, 13 quid now, but just put it in. Yeah. You've got nothing to lose. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a few quid, put it in. You yeah. never know what's going to happen yeah, on the exactly. day. So. Yeah, he did it. Fair play to him, came yeah. through. I Good. can't remember what place he qualified through. But, yeah. um, I think he got a, did he say a Q3? Q4. Three rings of that. Three, I no, think I it was a three, three. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. And considering, I mean, there was 70 odd, that's what I sent him, 70 odd in his age yeah. group. And he's come third, And it? he's come third yeah. in a race yeah. uh, that's got like the top guy. He's in the most competitive. Yeah, he's group. got the top guy, Donald Brooks, who we had yeah. on the podcast, and he's like just awesome. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely brilliant. But it's great as, you know, Father and son to go to That's the same it. race and be able to race in the GB kit. That would yeah. be really, really special. It's for me, yeah. yeah. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. So what have you done since then, since Sunderland? Uh, I've joined the swim club back because I figured I need to sort my swimming out now. Yeah. Um, and I'm back down to 540. Wow, which That's is excellent. Nice. Um, yeah. Running, I joined Clee Fox Athletics. Yeah. Because um, my main resource is, well, if I swim with swimmers and I cycle with cyclists and I run with runners, yeah. I'll be a semi-decent swimmer, a semi-decent cyclist, a semi-decent runner, which makes a good triathlon. Yeah. Well, Theoretically. Theoretically, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, are you in Clee Try as well? No. No, no I haven't joined any no. of the clubs. Um, if I was going to join anything, it would be possibly off that couch. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, because your dad's in that as well. Yeah. yeah. And um, they're, they're a good, uh, yeah, good there's club. Yeah, a lot of top athletes yeah, in yeah. there that would actually be able to push me. Absolutely, yeah. Um, cool. But no, I haven't joined anything yet. I mean, it's the first year that I can because you have to be 18 for them, don't you? Yeah. Um, and with university, I suppose you need to see how that fares out yeah, and settle so. down with that. So, but you've got you've got all the boxes ticked anyway, haven't you? Yeah, so that's good, excellent. Yeah. So, what um, have you done since Sunderland? And have you done any races? Um, yeah. You... So I focused on running over the winter. Right. Um. So I kind of uh, we dropped off on cycling slightly. Yeah. We just kind of kept that ticking over because at the end of the day, that's the top one. You got to prioritize your weaker ones. Um, so we figured, well, we've got from October when I started back to October next year to sort yourself out. Yeah. So let's focus on running over the uh, over the winter because I, well, last last winter I did okay on cross country, so yeah. we figured let's give it a whack this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I went through cross country and did all those races. Um, I think I've won about ninety quid or something in prize money. Wow, um, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, just from the races, and I'm in senior, so I was coming third in the senior races and winning the junior races. Um, so all of that was adding up. Mm. Um, and that must give you a spur yeah. to, you know. Yeah, definitely. It was nice to see that little me at 10 years old that couldn't win anything is now stuck at it and yeah. is now able to be that, well, be the top one that I was looking at back then, which is really, really <laughs> nice to see. Um, and it took, it was Dad saying to me, it was like, he sent me a Facebook post or something of me coming in last at the finish at the age of nine in tears because um, I finished and then there's me coming through onto a win this time. And he was like, well, yeah. look at the difference. Yeah. Eight year, eight nine years have made. You stuck at it, and that's it. You're, yeah. you're winning it now. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So yeah, that was on the local series, mm. um, and then I went a little bit further afield. So I was still in the school stuff, um, and I qualified for the Anglian Schools final, um, which was a different experience. I didn't enjoy it, but no. um, it was a nice race to go to. I like the local ones because you can sit and have a joke on the start line, and people are joking about it during the race as well, and you're not out of breath. Not too serious. It's not that serious. Yeah. Um, but the Anglian schools, I was making jokes on the start line like nobody was. was. <laughs> nobody was doing. They're like, shut up, shut up. Race. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bit too. Uh, it was a bit too. Yeah, and I was like, oh, well, this is not really something that I I want to do. Even with a triathlon on a start line, everyone's still having a joke with each other yeah. and messing about. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's what I like about it because it's such a friendly. Atmosphere. It's more relaxed, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, but. 
yeah. running they seem to take it really really seriously yeah um but yeah so i did that um came like 50th or something out of 100 so i did okay mm-hmm. um which was decent and then i did uh qualify for british intercounties as well um and represented homicide out on that um, Brilliant. and even got a mention on the tv screen excellent it was really funny they were going through all of the um, like the top running athletes and they're going oh so and so he's run um, national championships so and so he's represented England last week um, so and so won this last week and then he goes and Callum Smith from Humberside I just I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay I was like, well, at oh, least you got a mention yeah is that the you know, I was like oh I got on TV take that got on TV yeah, um, yeah. so yeah um, and then went out like a bullet on that one just to get myself a little bit more screen time and then just died at the back I did a London marathon <laughs> <laughs> brilliant yeah good well, I mean, it's all good, ex- again, good experience, isn't it? And yeah, good, it. good base training, yeah. cross country, isn't it? Yeah, it's so. got me through the winter. Yeah. Um, but now we've brought swimming back up into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then cycling's coming back up. Yeah. And getting back up to that 290, 300 watt threshold now. Cool. Which I want to tick over by the end of the year. But I'll, I'll get there. It'll, yeah, there, I mean, know. it's progression, isn't it? As yeah. you've, already, you've already done, you've come on like leaps and bounds, and it'll continue to do. Yeah. You're putting the work in, and you're getting great guidance. So. You just have to keep doing what you're doing, yeah, haven't you? And just believe in the process, like yeah. we said earlier. Um, so what other races other than Torremolinas are you going to focus on um, this year? Are you going to do any more qualifiers? Yeah, I think so. That's what I'm going to focus on. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a couple of local ones, so I'm doing Brig next weekend. All right, okay. Um, just to get my head back in it. Um, yeah. And then I think I've got May off, um, which I'll use as a bit of kind of race training, get yeah. some speed back into the legs. And then I'm going to do uh, Cardiff again. I've got my entry in for that. Um, I'm looking at doing uh, Calman. Uh, what else is there? The one up north. Oh, Longhorn. Is yeah, it Longhorn? Some, oh, Woodhorn. Woodhorn, Woodhorn Museum, not Long- Yeah, Woodhorn. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, we we did a relay because I couldn't run last year. We, a couple of them were racing it. Yeah. Um, and then I did a relay with Kate and another member of the uh the team. Yeah. And it was good. Yeah. It was I'm horrible good conditions, good. and I come off my bike. Oh, that's never good. <laughs> no, that wasn't great. Um, but it was yeah, it was a if it wasn't so wet, it would have been would have been better. But yeah, it was a good, well yeah. organised and good yeah, car. You'll enjoy that. Hopefully, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're looking at about two standards and then just whatever sprints I can fit in. So I'm going to do Eton Dorney because uh, Dad's racing down there for mm. the power try stuff. Yeah, um, so I head down with him. And oh, that makes that. sense, doesn't it? Yeah, um, tight. Going to do Mallory as well because I've never raced it before. Yeah, um, and it seems like a cool, a cool, cool place. Circuit. Uh, so I can do that one and uh, is that the qualifier? Yeah. So that's next weekend. Uh, oh, no, this not, week. Not the duathlon. Oh, not uh, the, the. Oh, the sorry. Yeah, it's one. duathlon this weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, triathlon. Yeah, do you? I, I might do duathlons. I don't know. Um, I haven't really ever done them to be fair. Yeah, they're hard. Yeah, they are hard. Yeah, um, they're harder than triathlons because obviously you you've got the. Have to swim. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, yeah, but you're swimming for for the for the age group. You're swimming must be. Up it's, there now. Yeah, it's got to be at yeah. that at that speed, um, but yeah. So I don't think. You, I mean, it's not to say don't do it, but you know, duathlons. You've got yeah. the you've got the swimming capability as well. Do them both. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, have a have a go at them both. Yeah. I mean, there's like, the great thing about multi sport is that there's aqua bike, aquathon, yeah, duathlon. You could, yeah, you could do whatever cross. You yeah. know what I mean? There's there's all sorts to go at. If you get yeah. if you get bored with one thing, and then you've got all the distances yeah. as well to look at. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just have to focus on what you want to do. What yeah. makes you makes you happy, aren't you? Yeah, there's always something to do. Yeah. Um, so. so yeah, do that into the back end of the season, and then um, well, I start uni on the sixteenth of September. Yeah. So trying to settle into that yeah. as well as well like again the train still. Yeah. That that's it. That's the big that's the biggie, isn't it? Yeah, that's your, your university's the biggie. Whatever you can do around that. Yeah. I think you've got to give yourself some grace when that yeah. that starts. Yeah. You know, don't don't worry about your training, just get used to well, a different so. environment. Yeah. But props to Hull, they've given me the time off. Um yeah. I called them up and said, Look, I've got this in yeah. October. Um is there any way that I can still start university this year? And they said, Yeah, absolutely. It's well, it's world championships at the end of the day, we're gonna give you the time off for it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so that's all sorted and that's, that's kind of nice. pressure off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it should be good fun. Yeah. Just train for the through the season, couple of training camps here and there. Enjoy it. Yeah. Cool. Well that's a great story. Thank you for um sharing it. Much appreciated. And um I've got a few quick fire questions and then we'll let you get back to your day. Definitely. So Thank the first you. one is, as I always ask, what's your favourite bit of kit? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much of it, isn't there? Yeah. Um <clears throat> I'd probably say mm, 
moving my wetsuits up there. Okay. Um, so I, what wetsuit have you got? I've got a Hoover Gillis. Right. It just doesn't feel like wearing a wetsuit. It's amazing. Mm. Um, I used to have a Hoover Alpha, which was a big clunky thing, yeah, yeah. and I couldn't really move my shoulders in it. And then I went straight to the Agilis because I thought, you know what, why not? Let's go for the top thing. Yeah. Um, and it just makes a difference. You it can does. feel it. It's, yeah. yeah. That, having that mobility in your shoulders yeah. to be able to swim is just massive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. It makes such a difference. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And what resources? I mean, obviously you coach and you've got your dad as a big yeah. resource. What other resources do you, you go to to um, help you? Yeah, so obviously the swim club as well. Um, of course. So yeah, I spend a lot of time there. The coaches are brilliant. Yeah. If I'm not moving fast enough, I'll get screamed at or a yeah. kick will throw my head. <laughs> <laughs> Bullying. <though. Yeah. laughs> so it target the triathlete. Um, and then the run club as well. Um, it is our run coach is brutal. Um, I think I turned up. I just got my GB kit and I wasn't running that great that day. And he goes to me and goes, "Well, if if you're uh, if you're good enough to wear that GB top, then at least be good enough to run fast enough and keep up with the top dogs." And it just gave me so much stick Brief. that whole yeah. thing. Um, I haven't ever worn my uh, vest down there in games. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's 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 good in one way because it keeps you grounded, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, really, it really yeah. does. Yeah, just to, and it's the fact that you're running with people that are constantly faster than you, um, and swimming with people that are faster than you. It's, yeah, you're always chasing. Something. And as long as you keep in the mind that you know that's all they do. Yeah, they're not trying to do yeah. three sports, so you know. It's fine not to be as good as them because yeah. you don't swim as good, you don't you don't swim as much, you don't run as much. So yeah. as long as you keep that in mind and don't let it go the other way and be <laughs> neg- a negative factor, it's yeah. it's good, isn't it? Um, um, just go through a week of training at the moment. What uh, what are you doing? Um, so at the minute, a Monday is usually a cycle and a swim. Um, it's usually just kind of like an easy hour and a half on the bike and then the swim I go in with um, I like swimming with people I yeah. hate swimming by myself sure um, so Grinsby try um, they're kind of top swimmers go in on a Monday night and they right. control the lane so I'll jump in and do about two and a half K with them and then go and do another K or so by myself yeah um, Tuesday is track Tuesday um, so we'll jump down to the track on that and that's my only thing that I'll do mm-hmm. uh, just because I'm on my back afterwards yeah it's brutal yeah um, Wednesday's usually kind of a recovery day um, so I'll swim I'll so do an easy cycle mm. I don't usually run because I've had problems with my hips yeah um, I've crashed a lot and landed on my yeah, hips yeah. and it's not yeah. good well you're, you're aware of it as well so yeah. it's good good to know yeah um, Thursday is a hard day um, last night was tough I usually do my bike set on a Thursday so I'll finish college I'll come home mm. and do my hard bike set so it was uh, 45, 45 is that on the system. trainer yeah yeah yeah, I always do it inside. Um, so whatever that is, whether it's threshold, whether it's fartlek, whatever, mm. I'll do that, and then I'll go with the swim club um, and get my arms whipped off for an hour and a half. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a Thursday. Friday, it depends whether I'm at work or not. Mm. Um, so I work. I'm on a three week road so and I work two out of the three Fridays. Okay. So I'll usually either do it. So if I'm at work, I'll do a kind of an hour run, and I'll do my long run then um, after I finish. Yeah. Or if I'm not, then it'll be um, my long run and swim club. And then Saturday and Sunday, the same with work, I'll swim, definitely swim uh, with the swim club. And then it's a long ride, usually on the Sunday, mm. and then a second run session on the Saturday, which is like eight minute thresholds, um, 45 minutes tempo, things like that. Just kind of the longer stuff. Yeah, cool. A lot of volume. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it is what it is, isn't it? You know? do, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, and I guess we've we've sort of like gone through your short term goal, which is going to be your big ones, Torremolinos, yeah. at the end of the year. So, what are your longer term goals? What do you want to achieve? Yeah, um, I'd love to go long. Um, I think that's probably more where I'm suited at. Yeah. Um, I did a debut half marathon a couple of weeks ago. I kind of just signed up for it off a wing and went, oh, do you know what? Let's see what I can do. Mm. Um, and I did a one twenty five. Um, which I was happy with considering mm. mile nine was not pretty. <laughs> well, mile nine onwards wasn't pretty. I had about four gels on me because I didn't know what was going to happen. Just neck it, <laughs> just get it back to my throat. Um, so yeah, I was happy with that. And I just, I think because I've kind of come into it late, I don't have the speed, but yeah. I reckon over a longer period of time. I can... You're only young. Yeah. You're only young. So got yeah, plenty, so... Of, plenty of time. <laughs> Loads of time. Yeah. But um, we're looking at, Dad wants to do another Ironman, um, so to carry on the father and son theme, I might jump in and do Wales with him next year. Ooh, brutal one. Yeah. Yeah. Do an easy one to start off with yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> but just, just go say, oh, I've done an Ironman, yeah. let's go and do it, and then um, see what happens. Because, I mean, it might be difficult with uni, but mm. we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's all you can do, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But you'd like to go longer. 
Yeah. And would you you want to continue with the age group? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna qual- well try to qualify this year. But yeah. It's in Australia, isn't it? Or it is. Which is expensive. Yeah. yeah. It's not cheap. No. So I might qual- well I'll definitely qualify for the Europeans or at least try to, yeah. and I'll probably end up doing that one if if I can't make it over to Australia. I think you just gotta be realistic and pick your races. What we do, yeah, pick it. your races, see what the expense is. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, great stuff. Good luck with it all. Thank it's been you. lovely to meet you and hear your story. And, um, yeah, just thank you once again for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. It was just so nice to hear the dogged determination of such uh, a young guy, especially in such a niche sport like triathlon. Uh, You know, as we said in the the chat, there isn't that many kids doing this sport. He only knows of one uh, other kid in our area, and our area, Lincolnshire, and... uh, Humberside, it's massive for multi-sport to be honest there's so many clubs like we said and to to think that there's not many kids coming up it's it's a shame but it hasn't put him off and you know chapeau to him for getting a coach and sticking with a coach and big respect to um entire performance coaching for helping him out um yeah definitely give them a look up if you're looking for a coach uh, because they sound as if they're pretty serious and honest and upfront and love the sport enough to um, help such a young a young guy like Callum. Um, and look at where it got him. You know, he tried uh, for the performance assessment super series, didn't quite hit the level, but uh, that hasn't stopped him either because he's then gone on and qualified to represent um, GB and age group. So it's all turned out quite nicely. And it's it's great to see that him and his dad can do it together. That's going to be, um, you know, it's all about making memories at the end of the day. Um, and they're going to be massive memories for the pair of them. So it's really, really nice to hear. Fantastic pair, fantastic uh, guys, in him and his dad. And uh, I'll be following them on Instagram uh, going forward. Um, so good luck with everything. And that's about it for this episode. Um, If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, please get in touch. Um, You can either email us uh, at agegroupmultisportpodcast.gmail.com or DM us at Instagram at amp underscore 1967. We're on Facebook at AmpGB. We're on X at Age Group Multisport Podcast. And as I said earlier, we've got our own YouTube channel, AmpGB. Uh, but just get in touch and if you want to come on or you know anybody who you think has got a good story to to share get them to uh get them to get in touch because we're always looking for the next um guest to come on the show so thank you once again for taking your time out to listen Uh, much appreciated and um yeah don't forget stay safe keep training and love the process 